Make sure it's early 70s, so with all the production, seeing your assets, so you need to build a global market, and so on and so forth. And we know the story, and that's a neoliberal policy. But then this policy hasn't really fit the problem. Because we had the, the, you know, the stock exchange crisis of 1987 and so on and so forth, and really the demand was stagnated because of course, you know, the cost of labor costs and so income of labor of workers is lower. And in particular, you know, financial markets were expanding because the first global market trading was capital markets. So there was a shift of power between the finance, you know, income to rent and so on and so forth. So what was the solution then? And this is where the new story began. And I think. It's a private pension intervention. You know, the state can bail everything out in terms of global demand. So all the others will do. And who are all the others? Are basically corporations, are basically banks, and are basically, um, um, you can call them households or um, families. And so this is in a way where you have um, um, the significance of a systemic global transaction war of what the liberal policy is only criticizing about. So in a way, large corporations more and more are finding still financial markets and not through banks or traditional credit. Um, banks are shifting, I mean, you know, it's pretty well, particularly in the US, where most of the profits of corporations are from financial markets and not from interaction. The banks are shifting their activities just for mediating the effects of the financial market. Again, the banking system in the US is doing pretty well as well. And, and concerning us, um, well, also in Geneva, again, more and more just like mediating, meeting their needs to manage the market. And you go to the credit, credit card, tax fines, and that everything you want. So this trend, despite the, the crisis, and people say it happens to not be this way. Well, it keeps growing even more and more. And more. So let's. Um, sorry, just Second, um, basically, the state you know, they has an entity, and then of course we said, well, this happened because the state has withdrew, you know, no industrial policies, the banks privatized, um, separation of different types of banks was abandoned, the state withdrew from the public system. Yes, that's right. But the state has been very, very strong in the last 20 years in supporting financial markets. Through monetary policy, through taxation, financial rent, bailouts of banks, building financial markets, and infrastructure globally. And so forth. Contrary to common sense, both neoliberal policies and also um, financialization of very say IIDP basically requires a strong state for building both the physical and financial infrastructure, which by the way is more than it. That's what the World Bank is for at the moment. So, what's hard in Antonio? Antonio? Yeah, I think. Sorry. Oh, could you speak up a little bit, please? Yes, yeah, sorry. And slowly, um, slowly. And, slowly. And, and, yes, yeah. and a little bit slowly, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. So the implications of, of these big problems are that basically there is now a new layer on the existing problems we have, which is potentially much more powerful. I mean, this is a kind of locking of many things already happening. I mean, you can make a parallel with investment agreements. You know, you have already foreigner investment generating programs and so forth, but then you have the investment agreements, which are something locking in things, uh, which can be activated or cannot be activated closely, but in any case, it's a locking for the future. And I think, in a way, this big problem is a potential locking in for the future. Now, for that, the communities on the ground, the problems remain hard to understand. You know, there might be an accelerated intensity in terms of commodification, in terms of expropriation, in terms of privatization, whatever you want, but the problems are the same. But new assets appear. You know, they might see new names, they might see new processes, and for them will be more and more unclear to understand what are the drives of these processes to take into position. I mean, and, and I think that's in a way where a major implication, you know, there is a further uh, distraction with democratic processes and these in terms of decision making. But then I think another implication is that this acceleration will produce new extractors because new assets are needed. And, and these are also physical assets, but not really financial assets. Financial assets are also physical assets. I mean, as Britain would say, we need to have more global integrated bottom markets. And even when you have sustainable alternatives emerging, Renewable control. There is a risk of financial additional to the market. So, 
the, the implications potentially are very good. You start seeing some of those, but again, probably a lot to come. Now, there are new frontiers that I want to be working on. Um, public finance, I won't talk much about that. Uh, you know, it's pretty well in Europe, but development finance for, for groups working on development. I mean, if you see real the transformation of the bank, why they want to use more financial industry, the way how the bank plans to get finance itself in the future, if you like, the World Bank itself is getting financialized. So there are deep implications there. There are implications of nature, of course, and that's what we're going to talk about more today. And what the natural comments where people say is the creation of new fictitious commodities. But also the financing of infrastructure itself can get financialized. Um, and again, I think the building of infrastructure as it is meant today goes to end in any build of deepening in your capital market infrastructure. We should be set to find a star sector expansion and its assets. What what you can even call um, basically a third wave of privatization. Now, there are progressively potentially doing much more much more to come and understand, but these are also for sure fields of operation where, where things are happening. Now, in, in the case of, of the big problem of in nature, I think, you know, that the story of all that and how all that got financialized is, is pretty well known, particularly for you in the US. But it's very interesting to remember also <coughs> how the, the end product of oil, so gasoline, diesel, and so on, got a lot of those markets financialized in the 90s, and actually, and environmental legislation in the U.S., which was creating more scarcity in markets, was used with it to build in the future markets. And then we have the electricity market. Again, you know, in the U.S. very well, the Enron case, uh, which you might use even example about a uh, financialization applied to the good commodity, the good, sorry, electricity, the commodity electricity, which gets financialized. Um, but in the last decade, I think we really got a lot happening. And, and that's where actually, <coughs> Financialization um, unfolds a lot of what you might call natural resources, um, of course a lot around food, um, a lot around different minerals, gold, and um, even the land. And again, all, all of these generate a lot of financial assets. I mean, through the rivers, basically, um, well, they allow to transform the simply holding of a simple stock of corn, for instance, into a financial asset, something which was not possible before. And then we had the first experiment of, uh, experiment of creating a new virtual commodity, uh, which you know is, is, is carbon. So what is next? Again, you know, there is, there is a lot. Um, if you listen to city group, I mean, of course, it should be water. If you listen to some else, it can be given with some services, where is the city? Um, but how the big problems really work in practice? Well, you know, we really should know what the guy from city group said, because First, you need to fabricate a commodity. Now, some commodities already exist, other uh, have to be fabricated, and that's where the, the traditional commodification process goes around. Now, this goes around around giving value, and we can discuss a lot around why giving value and what is giving value. Uh, but again, the process happens through privatization, through legislation, through generalization. There are different ways of commodification process. The second step is then you need to build a significant large market, potentially global integrated market. And that's where you need to make a commodity tradable in a standard way. Well. And for doing this, I mean, think of the gas market. So think of what I would say. You need to literally build a massive infrastructure. This is of the physical infrastructure. You can do that through conditionalities, the old way World Bank and that level, through legislation at the national level, through deregulation, and so on. And then in this new global sensical market, you need to create scarcity for overage. And again, that's, that's something the guy from, from Citigroup too really said. You know, you need to integrate markets. So you, at, at, in a way, you can see dams for storage, you can see canals and so forth, and then maybe few companies will be controlled, a few banks, a few people will control those assets, the infrastructure assets, and they can play in a way for creating scarcity in the market. Exactly what Aaron did with electricity, it really was the major um, oil traders, which by the way are the like banks, uh, systematically uh, do by controlling the storage lines and so on. So, this is the basis for building any profitable financial assets. You should go through all of this. So, it's a big project, it's incomplete, and it's very different from coming to commodity. We have a clear example of carbon market, which 
just being an experiment, and frankly, it doesn't work pretty well. You know, there are significant problems, you know, the price of carbon, how to expand to the world globally, and, and so on. So there is a lot to discuss there. The second area I want to focus on is, is the big problem, the IIBP and infrastructure. Now, uh, let me refer to a, 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 a paper with a very modest title from Goldsack uh, from last year called <laughs> Building the World. Um, and basically they talk about um, how private sector financing of infrastructure is seen not simply as a positive beneficiary of you know, the usual corporate welfare. But it's something else. It, it's, a, it's a driver of both financial innovation and the building of capital markets, which happens at the same time when you build infrastructure. Um, and again, this happens through dismantling, as they say, current onerous restrictions investment, liberalizing um, pension insurance funds, allowing them to invest in risky infrastructure projects, uh, the growth of ability based products around infrastructure, the development of bond markets. Project bonds, the opening up of the country economy to foreign banks and so on. So, just to rush into a conclusion, um, again, this is, this is thinking much more than the usual public power partnership. Um, I mean, this is, again, you might call it a third way of privatization. Why? Well, the, the first one was basically privatized public assets. Okay, well, but then they're not investing. Private companies are investing in infrastructure. So, God, you know, how can we make them invest in infrastructure? We pay the bill, and that's the PPP, you know, the state of privatization. Well, and then all the government got cash grabbed. How, how now we finance the, the private infrastructure again? And that here it comes, you know. We first build capital markets, financing infrastructure. It's way the infrastructure just the private sector interest for creating and generating new assets so that the show can go on. And this is something that G20 countries unfortunately lost a lot. But again, strong states need to go to all these levels. And again, these levels are a different stage in each, each country region. So to conclude, well, this, this big problem, frankly speaking, you know, it, it's very complete, it's still unfolding, and there are the old projects going on, like the liberal policies, and many thinking so we are getting together and moving together. So there is still a lot to understand, but I think there are some lessons to be learned. First of all, we shouldn't be scared. There are many leverage points. You know, a, a lot of new commodities do not work. Carbon markets do not work. Uh, they want to fabricate other commodities. It is a massive topic. They should go through um, many aspects. The first thing is building even a physical global market, building global spot markets is pretty tough. You need to control land, you need to control massive infrastructure, you need to build new financial um, market infrastructure. It's a very big talk and it takes a long time. And thirdly, they need a lot of legislation. And, and again, this is very interesting bubble ground for us, both for the efficiency of commodity, for the market, for scarcity, for the how to be value, and so on and so forth. Again, all of these won't solve the present recognition. I mean, and, and again, you know, after the problem is generating forever, you have to touch with the name. But for us, the question is a little bit about how a different answer can be conceived, and the question is more about which one be. So if you really want to fix financialization or the big problem, probably should talk more about the economy and the finance. And again, the question is probably about how the economy of the economy should work. I'm going to stop here, and sorry for being too long. Mm -hmm.